Welcome to Yard Talk. I'm Doug. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm a trained landscape architect and I believe in strong design. I'm a born naturalist and I think that good design can create great backyard wildlife habitat. As you'll see, we sometimes look at gardens in different ways. But we both agree that the natural approach to lawn and garden care is the best. We're here to answer some of the many questions we hear from homeowners all over King County who call in to the Natural Lawn and Garden Hotline. We'll show you cutting edge techniques to save you time and money without poisoning our children, our pets, or the environment. The great Northwest. We're so fortunate to live in such a gorgeous area of the country. It's up to all of us to protect our natural resources. King County urges us all to reduce, reuse, and recycle. One of the easiest ways to accomplish this is with our yard waste. Today, most areas of King County offer curbside collection services that recycle our yard waste. It's easy and it's a great way to take care of our environment. Coming up, we'll show you how all your old leaves and grass clippings are turned into a fine usable compost. It's the ultimate way to reuse and recycle. You can also reduce yard waste in your garden by reducing the size of your lawn, a big design trend nowadays. And you can reuse by buying locally made compost. Or you can save some money by recycling right on your site with a compost tip. Aha, the wonders of compost. One of the keys to any successful garden is having healthy soil. And most any soil is improved with the addition of compost, either dug in or added on top as a mulch. We'll show you how you can take your yard waste and turn it into free mulch with a dirt simple composting setup. Many folks living in King County dutifully dump their lawn and garden clippings into big bins each week and roll them out to the curb to be picked up. It's easy enough, right? But have you ever wondered what happens to those clippings? Well, a lot of folks send their yard waste to Cedar Grove Compost, a state-of-the-art compost facility up in Everett. Susan Toman from Cedar Grove gave us a tour of their amazing facility. Well, that's a 25,000 yard pile of com compost there, and it came from about 40,000 inbound tons of material. Wow. Well, Cedar Grove Composting is one of the largest uh, yard and food waste composting facilities in the United States. We have two plants and we have the capability of bringing in over 350,000 tons of material every year. Yard waste comes in and it gets tipped into the tipping building. From there we grind it up. The conveyor system brings it to a compost processing area called a compost heap. We cover it with a special fabric. We put the fabric down for about 30 days on the first phase. It's aerated, we measure the temperature. After 30 days in the first phase, we put it on another conveyor system. We drop it into the second phase, we cover it for two weeks. And then in the third phase, it goes into an open system where it's aerated and we're measuring the temperature. So basically at the end of an eight week process, we've created a compost out of green waste that's come in from a yard bin. Composting's great for your garden. One, it has natural nutrients in it. It adds porosity to the soil, which is important, especially when you have hard clay soils. It gives structure to the soil, which is a very important part of good gardening, is that you want structure in your soil. Biology is a big part of gardening, and it, and it really minimizes your need to use chemicals in your garden. Store-bought organic compost is great, and it will do amazing things for your garden. But you can also keep your clippings at home and make your compost in your own backyard. To do that, let's visit with Darcy Batura, the rocking goddess of rot, mistress of mold, to learn how to make black gold. Okay, you guys asked for the dirt simple approach to making backyard compost, and here it is. A few tools you may need are a compost bin, pitchfork, some gloves, and a hose. The four basic ingredients you need to make compost are greens, browns, air, and water. To make good compost, you want to make sure you have 50% greens, like fresh cut grass, and 50% browns, like leaves. You're going to mix your materials like a tossed salad and make sure it's watered to the consistency of a wrung out sponge.
Okay, now that our pile is built, we're gonna leave it to do its composting magic and come back in about a week to turn the pile. After a week, turn the heap to make sure the microbes breaking down the pile have all the food, air, and water they need. Keep turning the pile once a week for about six weeks. After this, wait a couple of months and presto, you've got compost. It is possible for your compost pile to develop some problems. If your pile is wet and smells like rotten eggs, your pile needs turning and the addition of more brown to the mix. If the pile is taking too long to decompose, you need to add more greens and some water. If the center of the pile is dry with large non-decomposed materials, water and turn. This also works for matted and non-decomposed layers. If the pile is attracting animals, it's likely there have been food scraps or proteins added to the mix. You can avoid this problem by using a green cone or worm bin for food waste composting. For more information about compost, contact the King County Solid Waste Division or consider becoming a King County Master Recycler Composter. Okay guys, that was the dirt simple solution to making backyard compost. Now you too can become a master of mold. Thanks Darcy. Now our mistress of mold does recommend turning the pile once every week for about three weeks. One of the best ways to do this is to simply lift your bin off the pile and turn the leftover compost back into the empty bin. Using a pitchfork, turn the steaming compost into the empty bin. Simple, right? And you'll have all that great compost to use right in your own backyard. There is another form of manure that is also great for your yard and garden, biosolids. Biosolids are the treated solid materials that are left over from wastewater treatment plants. The biosolids are mixed into a great compost for your garden. King County's biosolid compost is called GROCO. Craig Cogger from the WSU Extension has more info on using GROCO in your garden. Okay, we're at the Washington State University Demonstration Garden and behind me is our demonstration with GROCO, um, a compost made from biosolids and woody material from King County. Um, behind me is a plot that's been treated with GROCO. What we did here is we added one inch of GROCO in the spring and tilled it under, just as you could do in your own garden. And you can see the growth of the plants that we've gotten from this. There's been no additional fertilizers or amendments added to this plot. Um, you could see the great growth of tomatoes we've gotten here. Um, look at the sunflower, look at the size of the leaves that we have on these sunflower plants. You can see the green color. The GROCO, not only is it an organic amendment that improves the physical qualities of the soil, but it's also a source of nitrogen. So you get both benefits when you add it to your garden. Let's take a walk over to another part of the demonstration garden and see a plot where we have not added GROCO. This is the garden plot that was not treated with GROCO. Notice that the plants are much smaller, the sunflower plant and the tomatoes. They don't have the same green color. They're not as vigorous as with the nitrogen supplied by the GROCO. These cosmos, petunias, and ornamental peppers are grown in soil that was not treated with GROCO. The soil where this cosmos is growing received an inch of GROCO this spring. You can see the greater vigor and size of these plants. The demonstrations in our garden show that GROCO improves plant growth, both by supplying nutrients that plants need for annual crops and supplying organic matter that builds the soil over the long term. If you want more information about GROCO, you can call King County at 206-684-1247. Compost deserves the term black gold. It will enrich your garden, help eliminate the need for chemicals, and protect your plants like no other tool. That's right, Greg. Whether you make it at home or buy it from our local facilities, compost is one of the essential pillars in the practice of natural and successful yard care. Sometimes, however, people handle the yard waste in less productive ways, like dumping it on the side of roads. This is illegal, harms the environment, and can bring fines. If you have a quantity of yard waste and don't know what to do with it, 
call the Lawn and Garden Hotline. They can direct you to proper ways of disposal. Ah. Adding compost to your garden is one of the simplest garden tasks you'll run across. Here we have a perennial bed that needs some additional help, needs the soil fed. All we're going to do is add one to two inches of compost directly around the plant. It doesn't get any easier than that. One of the simplest tasks, sometimes weeds will grow in the top of the compost. They pull out so easy when you have that nice fresh layer of mulch down, it's almost not a task at all. Now for grass, you can go in and add about a quarter inch of this stuff and spread it nicely across the yard in the spring or the fall, and that'll rejuvenate your yard and really create nice healthy roots for your grass. Another great thing you can do with compost is take two to four inches of it and till it into eight inches of a garden bed and your vegetables will grow like they've never grown before. For perennial beds, use two inches of compost. For lawns, use one quarter inch raked over the top. For vegetable beds, use two inches tilled into the soil. An important tip to remember when designing your garden or redesigning, as a lot of folks do, is to group your plants by their water needs, all drought tolerant and native plants together and those with higher water needs together. That way, you aren't wasting water on plants that don't need it. Of course, using compost and mulch helps hold water longer in any soil. But if you already have needy or newly planted plants in a drought area, use mulch more thickly over the plant that needs more water. This will help keep it from drying out. Well, there you have it, folks. More tips for gardening the natural yard care way. If you have questions of your own, call the Lawn and Garden Hotline and tell them you have a question for Doug and Greg, and who knows, you may see us answer it on the air. Have a healthy garden and a healthy family, too.